I think that the major impact, the major reason why we see these differences in terms of recycling rates in particular areas that have waste to energy, these would be those that don't, is basically the state and local policy environment. To, to make the decision to move to a waste to energy facility, there has to be a lot of studies of feasibility, of understanding the waste stream, of thinking through what are the different streams of the waste that I have, how can I best maximize those streams. The, the kind of planning that goes into this uh, type of a facility really engages the whole gamut of the waste stream, the waste management stream. And so those, those uh, localities, districts, solid waste districts that have decided or are looking at uh, moving to a waste to end facility as one part of their waste disposal strategy are, are also engaged in sort of an integrated waste policy uh, initiative. And, uh, you know, there are various areas of the United States we can cite, Florida being one. Uh, some of the facilities in Florida have the most advanced recycling programs, as well as energy recovery at landfill, as well as landfill uh, solar, uh, rec uh, using landfill cover sheets that have solar uh, panels on them to actually generate power additionally from their landfill. Plus, not only uh, citing waste to energy facilities, but in one case in Palm Beach County, actually building a second waste to energy facility in the midst of a, a wide range of initiatives being taken on every waste front. Uh, another good example, and a very interesting one to me, is Minnesota, and I think one of our guests comes from Minnesota. Minnesota is an interesting state. It's in the Midwest. It has access to some low-cost landfill. Um, but within the state itself, especially within certain areas, the landfills themselves are uh, very problematic given the geological um, formations of the rock. And so there's been a real effort in certain areas to nearly move to a landfill ban or to lower the amount of landfilling to about 10% of the waste. And in those areas, waste to energy plus recycling has become the major strategy. And again, these are not some of these plants are not the large plants that we might associate with waste energy on the East Coast or maybe even in Florida, but these are mid-sized to smaller plants that are being, um, that are actually being built in conjunction with a very, very strong statewide recycling policy. Uh, and, and so in, in some places, it's both the local and the statewide policy that has really, I think, helped to uh, in those areas where you see high recycling rates and often in conjunction with waste to energy. I think that this, that is very true. Um, although there is a growing concern amongst uh, uh, local politicians about the cost of waste energy uh, and, uh, and its environmental effects. So there are, there are a lot of counter arguments uh, being brought forward about whether or not uh, it should continue. Uh, most of those are based on old data, again, uh, but the issue that is most commonly brought up is the economic one about the increased cost and, and uh, how much cheaper it is uh, in a market sense to take, uh, take waste to a landfill in a neighboring state. Is that true? Uh, does the, the increased cost argument bear out uh, if you extend it to the life cycle of the waste energy plant? Or is it? Um, no, it, it, it doesn't, and, it, and it's really predicated on the idea of externalizing uh, all of the cost of the decomposition of that waste uh, by just dumping it in the ground and, and really not taking that much further responsibility for it other than eventually covering it up and uh, harvesting some of the methane. But a great deal of the methane and a great deal of the greenhouse gases that is produced by landfills, as you know, uh, happen in the first decade while the landfill is open. Uh, so I think it's based on some false economics that we really need to address in our policy system.